Roll. bbc.co.uk slash five live in short. Imagine living with this ringing in your ears all day and night, every day and night. Or what about this? Or even this? Just some of the unbearable sounds endured by those with tinnitus simulated there on a synthesizer. There's evidence today and a report by the charity Action on Hearing Loss that fewer than half of NHS audiology departments give tinnitus sufferers access to the four key services they need to manage their condition. We'll be talking to somebody from the charity shortly. Let's just have a quick word with the sufferer. Eddie Leader is a DJ based uh, here in Manchester. Well, I can imagine how you got your condition. Too much loud music, would that be right? Indeed, yeah. Um, I actually got mine from DJing about five or six years ago in Edinburgh, but it may have been a build-up over the years, but that's the specific night I remember it happening. I mean, of those three noises you just heard, did any of them adequately represent what you hear? (laughs) Not, Not really, actually. I mean, I think it probably differs for every user but mine sort of sounds like the old internet dial-up tones if you can remember those back in the day um, when you when we were sort of using a, an old phone line to to dial up to the internet right okay that's an interesting one what it's very the sort of very high-pitched sounds which sort of oh I know. different I frequencies yeah. yeah exactly um well, almost like a fax yeah, no, like, when, like when you call a fax number by exactly, mistake. Exactly, yeah, and it, it's, it depends on uh, your level of tinnitus and how loud it is, but it can, uh, you know, it can be very uh, annoying to say the least. Okay, if you're a sufferer and want to share your experience of this appalling condition, do call us 0500 909 693 or text 85058. Uh, Louise Hart is a senior audiologist with Action on Hearing Loss. Uh, Louise, thanks for coming on. What Exactly what is tinnitus there and who's affected? OK, Adrian, um, tinnitus is a ringing in the ears or a sound in the ears. Um, and it can be in one ear, it can be in both ears. It can be many different types of sounds, as Eddie said. Um, for some people, it can even be a musical hallucination. So that's where they hear the same piece of music happening over and over again. Um, and it can be more than one sound. So how do you get it? Is it, to some extent, is it imagined? Um, which doesn't make it any less real, but is it, is it, is it a, a psychological issue rather than a physiological issue? No, um, it's... It's basically, it's a physiological issue. So there's been either a trigger factor or something that's caused it. So it might be a piece of loud music um, and a person's had tinnitus and a hearing loss um, afterwards and the hearing's probably come back, but the tinnitus has just stayed. Um, But it's the brain that turns up the volume. So we know that it happens somewhere in the cochlea or on the pathway to the brain. So there's no one trigger factor, no one cause. And you are saying at the charity that the main treatments in almost half of cases aren't being offered by the by the NHS? Yeah, the gold standard is to have the four treatments together. So that's information and devices like um, uh, sound therapy, um, white noise generators, um, tinnitus retraining therapy and cognitive behavioural therapy. So when we were talking earlier about the brain um, turning up the volume, the cognitive behavioural therapy is to help you deal with those perceptions and turn down the volume. So, Eddie, which of those treatments have you had? Um, the uh, white noise generator. I went to see the audiologist sort of when I started hearing it five or six years ago. And uh, I was, I um, don't know if prescribes the right word to use, but given a sort of white noise generator. Um, so I, I choose sort of like um, waves of the ocean, the tide coming in and out. And I, I put that on at night. So because that's when I hear it, when it's when it's really quiet. So if I turn that on to a level that's higher than my tinnitus, that sort of curbs the volume. So it's a lot easier for me to deal with it. And again, like Louise was saying, it's a lot to do with your brain. So if you can hear it and you tune in, it starts to get louder. And, uh, you know, whenever you're stressed or whatever, it gets worse. So um, if if the white noise generator takes away that level and you forget about it, it's easier to cope with. Oh, what about CBT, a, a talking therapy? Have you ever tried that? I haven't personally, no, no. So that... So at, at night is when you mainly hear it? Yeah, I mean, it depends on the levels. Personally, for me, that's when I hear it. I don't hear it that often because I do use the... Uh, anymore because I use the white noise uh, generator. 
Um, but for instance, my uncles have got it from working in engineering years ago. They've got it so bad that they, you know, some of them can't sleep at night. So uh, it, it can differ depending on the person. So you said this went back to when you were DJing once in Edinburgh. What, what can you just talk us through that night? Um, the system was too loud, basically. Um, you know, it depends on the engineer who's working at the night. Um, when you're DJing, you know, behind the decks, you can have control of the monitors, so it's easier to sort of, you know. Um, to sort of monitor, but when you're in the actual system and the uh, engineer's got control of it, it can be too loud sometimes. So what what is a safe level? Um, in terms of dBs, I'm not exactly sure, but I mean, just kind of use, use your head really to kind of work out what's too loud. I mean, if it feels like it's painful and it's distorting, then generally that's not safe. Okay, we, we've got that dial-up sound for you. Is this, a, is this a representation of what you hear? Is this closer to it? I'm just trying to yeah, yeah, get sure. inside your head. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not trivialising yeah. it anyway, Eddie. Yeah, I just yeah, want to cool. try and understand what it's like to be in your head. Uh, go on then, let's hear it. That it's that bit. It's that, that long, yeah, continuous yeah, yeah, bit, yeah, is it? Yeah, yeah. And are you aware of that now? So I was talking about it, it doesn't help. You want to, we should be, we should be talking about something else and then you're <laughs> no, focusing I, I, on it. I mean, you know, with the sort of levels of background noise that are going on today, I can't hear it unless it's uh, sort of night time, really, unless it's really quiet. But it, again, it depends on the person. If you're talking to someone else, then, they, you know, it might bother them. Uh, Louise, is, is Eddie's case fairly typical? Uh, yes, it is fairly typical. Um, you know, people can become very, very distressed by it and not be able to sleep. Some people have even had to give up work. So for 600,000 people across the UK, it has actually become severely disabling for them. And, um, you know, and they aren't able to concentrate and they do need the help and the devices and the information that organisations like ourselves provide. Okay, we've got a uh, we've got another sufferer, Trey Lowe, uh, and another record producer, songwriter, DJ, worked for Usher, Justin Timberlake, Mariah Carey. Trey, th hey. thanks for coming on. What what started it with you? So my tinnitus was um, a little bit different in that it was started once I had my appendix um, removed when I was young because you know most people think tinnitus is a loud noise trigger, but often stress as well can trigger it. So that was my initial sort of. Um, Welcome to the world of um, tinnitus. And over the years from sort of music producing, DJing, etc., it just got louder and louder. And I didn't connect the two because it didn't start from a sort of an acoustic trauma, which is a loud noise event. It but was I mean, a, what, to be fair, why would anybody connect the two? Having I know. an appendix removed. But, yeah. So you, you came round for the operation. How old were you? I was about 15 at the time. So you came round for the operation and then what? I just had this noise. And I was saying to my parents at the time, like, can't you hear this noise? I... You know, I had other issues as well. It's just, it was just, it went a bit complicated. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Um, and it was just this noise. But in a way, I mean, that, that's that's one of the big things about tinnitus. It's the ignorance around it. I really should have connected the loud noise with the um, tinnitus because it was getting worse and worse. Certainly after I DJed, or certainly after I'd been in studios for ages, it was worse. But because it had started differently, I didn't completely connect it onto one event in 2008 where I DJed. It was really loud, and I thought. Definitely, definitely, it's the um, it's the loud noise. But Louise, have you heard of a, an, a, an appendix operation or something similar triggering it like this? As, as we said, as I said earlier, it, there's more than one trigger factor and more than one cause. So for some people, even moving their head a particular way because there isn't the circulation happening, um, they can find that their tinnitus is louder. We know that people have problems with their jaw often have actually quite loud tinnitus as well. So I wouldn't say it's all that unusual. We've got, a, uh, we've got a caller in, John, in Stockton on Tees. Uh, John, what's your experience of it? Hello. Hi, John. Hi, John. Hello there. Hi. Um, yeah, I've had tinnitus now for 36, year, 36 or 38 years. Um, situation is I worked in, a, in an, an industry where there was high-speed machinery. Now, even wearing earmuffs, ear protectors and everything else, I found that after about four years, my I started to get this tinnitus snow on the ear. And it was like a steam, you know, a steam escaping from a pipe. Or I actually likened it to standing behind a 747 with its jet engines going. And it literally, you go to bed with it and you get up with it in the morning. And the only way of doing anything about it at all is to try and have music on or I listen to the radio a lot because I can't have silence or it will drive me completely crazy. Well, that's an awful thing to deal with because a bit of a silence never goes amiss for anybody, does it? Just to, just to get your head together. And if, if that's denied you, that's a problem. 
Well, I was offered two choices, and that's going back a long time. One was they could, they could put a blanker in that they hoped they hoped would actually equal the same sound and maybe block it out. What put it or, in where? In, in my ear. Right. It's like it was like it's supposed to be like a hearing aid. Uh, and then the other choice was just to deafen me. Actually, to pierce the eardrum, deafen me so that I wouldn't have it. They said it wouldn't happen then. And it wasn't much of a choice, oh. but the... Uh, well, hang on, that sounds a bit Victorian to me. Louise, def- deafening people surely is, is, isn't something we practice these days, is it? Um, it's very, very rare to have that done, and, and it's only really in exceptional circumstances. So, and usually because there might be other factors in play, like an, um, many as disease and stuff like that, where um, the, the individual needs to have the tinnitus and the balance issue sorted out. So, in general, what um, he what he was talking about is the use of a white noise generator that looks like a hearing aid that goes in the ear and is set just underneath the level of the tinnitus. That that's really important because if it's set over the level of the tinnitus, then the brain doesn't learn to choose which sound to listen to. So it's not dissimilar to what Eddie here does with his uh, with his waves coming in and out. Yeah, it's very similar. It, you've got to choose the sound that um, makes you more relaxed, more comfortable. Um, and what works for you. So not everybody finds those white noise generators helpful. Some people find um, a piece of relaxation music helpful. Um, Some people use a sound therapy ball, which plays things like... um, the, you know, um, a river and, and rain and things like that. And they find that really helpful, um, particularly when they're sleeping. But it's really important to have sounds around you all the time during the day and at night so that your brain focuses on those other sounds and not on the tinnitus. Can, can I just say something there? Go on, John, yeah. You're saying about the choices you get. Uh, those were the choices I was given at, the, at about four years after I actually started. Okay, yeah. I had complete head scans, I had everything done, and uh, that's what they came up with. But I have never been offered anything since then. And maybe you can say, well, you didn't ask. But I know some of my medical records, somebody, if, if they wanted to, would have picked it up. But uh, the other thing is, and it may be also relevant, I have problems with my middle ear where it gets, um, I don't know whether it's like leak liquid or something into it, and which causes me a balance problem. Yeah. If I lie down flat and suddenly sit up, I get uh, nausea, I get sick, I get actually dizzy, and that's part of the problem too, I think, in the left ear. But again, uh, you're just left to get on with it. So what, what has helped for you briefly? You say listening to the radio yeah. generally, a bit of music, anything more than that? No, that's really all I have. The intensity, they can't do anything about how intense it is. It, it just go. sometimes it drops in the level a wee bit of the, the volume. You think somebody was turning it up, actually. Then there's other times it's so loud, it's actually deafening me, you know, cutting out everything else that you can listen to. Uh, Trey, what's worked for you? Um, for me, really fundamentally what works best, um, and your caller just alluded to that, is, is really how you think. I think tinnitus is not something you suffer from just because the noise is there. You suffer from it because of the meaning you give tinnitus. What works for me really is just to be keep busy, it's to be fit. Obviously it is to avoid silence. Unfortunately for us tinnitus sufferers, it's not pleasant to sit there and listen to it. So I, I'll have white noise generators coming off my phone, um, I'll have the radio on, I'll have music on. So I, so I don't let it alter my life in many ways because that is where you suffer. I just get on with it but take all necessary precautions that I can take. So yeah, so me, for me it's definitely sound enrichment and working out and keeping busy and just being positive. So in, in a funny way, tinnitus has actually been a blessing in disguise for me because it's, it's led to me living a very, very healthy lifestyle. Louise, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of more confused how you avoid getting it because it, I suppose in my ignorance I thought it was you know, loud music, loud noises can trigger it, but it seems you can just get it anyway. Yeah, uh, I mean, we do know that the older you get, the, it increases. So as you get older, people, you are more likely to develop tinnitus. But um, also, um, as you get in older, older age, you might develop the tinnitus, but it seems to be less of an issue. So I think the most important thing is, as Trey said, is to leave lead a healthy lifestyle. You know, there is research and there's an organisation, Action on Hearing Loss, is funding research into tinnitus and into the causes of tinnitus, and we do want to find a cure for it. Um, 
But at the moment, it's, as Trey said, trying to lead a healthy lifestyle and trying to change your perception. And, and you know, that's where having these audiology departments with good serv- tinnitus services is really important to providing help to people with tinnitus. And for the gentleman that was talking before, I'd say go back to your GP and get a, a referral back to your, your audiology department for both the tinnitus and the balance problems because you shouldn't need to be suffering like that. But I mean, just to be clear, I don't want to give the I don't want to give the impression that because you can just get it anywhere, you shouldn't avoid loud noises and having your having your your headphones on too loud. It's and really so on. yeah, it's really important to protect your hearing because we know that you know for a lot of people tinnitus does happen with with noise. Um, if I can hear your headphones, it means they're too loud. So I always say that. Um, loud a loud sound is too loud if it's over the level of a hairdryer so a hairdryer is around 80 db so we're looking at 85 db and on and the louder the sound the less amount of time that you can be in it safely okay let's speak to zoe as called in uh, zoe in kent i'm sorry to hear you're a sufferer oh no it's okay the, um yeah i've had it all my life it's a really high pitch it just goes I, I, I think you and Eddie should get together <laughs> because it's more or less the same he's hearing. That's a number. Yeah, I've had it all my life and I asked my mum when I was really young, I said, what's that noise? And she, she said, what noise? But it, it's, uh, I agree with your other speakers in that it's worse when it's quiet. But it, it's um, no amount of healthy lifestyle or anything will alter it. It's like having someone just talking to you and they won't shut up. But what about uh, your... What about a white noise generator along the lines that Trey uses and Eddie was saying he uses? Well, I, I haven't been offered anything. And you know, I, I, I was referred to audiology and they they just said, well, we can't do anything. It's incurable, so you've just got to learn to live with it. Well, to be fair, that's not much of an audiology department, really, is it, no, Louise? Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, so, Louise, what would you suggest? To, I mean, Zoe can't stop at that. Surely, we've got to, we've got to sort something out. Yeah, for I would say um, she can get in touch with our information line um, or go on to our website on action dot action at on hearingloss.org.uk. But I would say go back to your GP, ask to be either referred back to your audiology department and say, look, I'm not happy with this service, or um, ask to be referred to a cognitive behavioural therapist. There might be one local to you that can help you deal with the tinnitus, or alternatively, ask to be referred to a different hospital. So, you know, they, your GP can refer you to another area to um, access that service. So for some people, their local department doesn't provide a tinnitus service, but there may be one a little bit further away that does. But you know, it shouldn't be a postcode lottery and, and audiology departments should be providing that gold standard service for everybody, not just haphazardly. All right, Zoe and John, yes. do keep in touch with us, both of you, and do try yes, and get yes. something done. And if you're struggling, you. then uh, do let us know. OK, thank okay. you. Thanks, you. Thanks very much to both of you. Call us from Kent and Stockton on Tees there. Uh, Louise, another question for you. I'll read in my notes that not getting declining hearing sorted can help because most of us start losing our hearing sometimes in 50s and 60s and just managing without a hearing aid can make tinnitus worse yeah if you can hear less as trey was saying and eddie was saying if you hear more external sounds then you know the tinnitus goes into the background so the longer you leave your hearing loss unaddressed then you're more likely to hear the internal sounds that are happening in your ear. So as, as I said earlier, tinnitus is, there's more than one trigger factor and more than one cause. And we know that it's basically happening in the ear and your brain's kind of listening to the sound. And if you can't hear other, other outside sounds as well, then you're going to focus on that inside sound. OK, Louise, thank you very much. Trey, what are you working on now then? Um, so, got a couple of remixes coming out, working on an EP, working on the album, doing lots of different um, bits and pieces, which is one of the messages I really want to put forward, I think, for people with tinnitus. It shouldn't be something that should stop your life. And, you know, whether you're like me, you work in industry, or if you're someone that likes going to festivals and party and the rest of it, I think it's just really just taking precautions with your hearing. I mean, most tinnitus is made worse by loud music and it's so easy to avoid. It's just wearing earplugs. I mean, I have sort of specific musician hearing plugs, but you can get lots of cheaper plugs which are on the market just to protect your hearing. So my message really is to do what you're doing, but just look after your hearing. Take breaks if you're in loud noise, loud noise places or, you know, keep your earplugs in. So for me, it's definitely just keep on with your life, you know. 
Okay, Trey Low, thanks very much for that. Thanks, Finally, Andrew. Eddie. Where, you say you've got this noise generator generates waves coming in and out. Yeah. So, do, does that make it soothing to be by the seaside there? And are there other places you can go physically that give you some relief from it, or does it not work like that? Um, it does actually. Yeah, if you're out in the countryside or if you by the sea, that's definitely helps. I mean. I actually went to the doctor pretty much the week after I first heard it and then was referred to the audiologist and then got the white machine uh, noise generator quite early. So, so the systems work well for it's you, actually. But yeah. it's, it's shocking to hear, isn't it, from John and Zoe that, I mean, you've been completely let down as far as I can see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, indeed, it's not It's not very nice to hear that. I mean, just going back to um, what Louise was talking about, yeah. about sort of preventing and Trey was talking about preventing. Actually, I've got custom-made earplugs and uh, that night I wasn't actually wearing them. So if I had have been, you know, I might not be in the situation that I am now. So, uh, you know, I think it's more about prevention and then actually dealing with it when you do have it. OK, all the best. Eddie Leader, thanks very much Thank to you. you for coming in. Uh, do keep in touch with us about tinnitus. If you've got an experience of it, perhaps we can talk to you a bit later. No. Okay, we'll uh, we'll work on it. Let's go back to a story we were doing uh, we were doing earlier about tinnitus, about how the NHS is failing some people. Seems to be a bit of a postcode lottery. There's four basic treatments, and less than half of NHS audiology departments were offering them. Um, John says, I used to have tinnitus after years of clubbing and going to gigs. High-pitched ringing and persistent loud beats used to be really distressing. I thought I'd suffer for life, then I gave up drinking alcohol completely and it cleared up within weeks. I know someone else this happened to. Worth a try for sufferers, I would suggest. Uh, so says John. And um, the audiologist, Louise, who we spoke to earlier, said general healthy living, you wouldn't think it, but really does affect your hearing. Um, Allen, head of news gathering at Al Jazeera English. It's just gone 20 to 12. This morning, earlier we were talking about tinnitus after it emerged that fewer than half of NHS audiology departments are giving sufferers access, access to the four key services they need to manage their condition. I spoke to Louise Hart, a senior audiologist with the charity Action on Hearing Loss. So there's no one trigger factor, no one cause. The gold standard is to have the four treatments together. So that's information and devices like um, uh, sound therapy, um, white noise generators, um, tinnitus retraining therapy and cognitive behavioural therapy. So when we were talking earlier about the brain um, turning up the volume, the cognitive behavioural therapy is to help you deal with those perceptions and turn down the volume. Anne in Weybridge in Surrey has been in touch. Anne, how long have you been suffering? Oh, hello. Good morning, morning. Adrian. Um, well, I think my story might be a little bit unusual because um, I, I went to bed in November last year, mid-November, mm -hmm. and was absolutely fine. Had normal hearing, no tinnitus, and woke up at normal time in the morning with incredibly loud tinnitus, white noise, so loud that you wouldn't be able to hear people talking above it and some associated hearing loss. Um, and um, obviously that was terrifying. It's the most terrifying thing I've been through. Um, basically, it's like torture. Someone's turned on white noise. You can't sleep. Uh, I couldn't eat. Uh, I couldn't convey to people really how awful it was because you look like you're OK. You don't look any different to the day before. Um, and that went on for about five days and I got to see a doctor and um, not my normal doctor and they sort of basically said well it's tinnitus um, you'll get used to it um, and sort of that was that um, I knew I couldn't really survive like that it was devastating the sleep deprivation the noise. Um, I got to see someone who's a, an ear specialist, but they said again, it's tinnitus, you'll get used to it. They did actually say I could go to a tinnitus clinic and I have actually got an appointment, um, not next week, the week after. But I did manage to read online that if you do have something that's sudden and comes on like that, you do need to get corticosteroids within a small window of opportunity that could save your hearing. And luckily, I have a fantastic GP, uh, Dr. Blewett, um, and he prescribed for me. And within 48 hours, my tinnitus had come down to a level that I could sort of sustain. I've still got it now. 
but they have discovered that I might have um, a, a link. The reason for it might be migraine without headache. So it looks like yeah. that there's a reason and they can treat the underlying cause. And I'd like to say to people with tinnitus, really, really push for looking for an underlying cause because if that can be treated, your tinnitus can be treated. Uh, and, and I think no two, yeah. no two tinnitus cases sound the same. I mean, from yeah. the few I've spoken to this morning, it's uh, everyone seems slightly different. Just stay with us, Anne. Norma yeah. is yeah. in uh, in Devon. Uh, you, you've suffered for rather longer than Anne, Norma. Yes, yeah, since about 1987. And how um, did that start? It just started. I just noticed... Um, this high pitched ringing in my ears, and at the time when it started, it was fairly quiet, but I, I, it was in the background, and then it just got worse and worse. Um, went to my GP, I got sent to Torbay Hospital where they fitted me with the um, hearing aid type things, yeah, which I had for a good few years, and it was wonderful. I had a constant waterfall in my ears, and when I went to sleep, oh, it was amazing. Then it broke. Well, they both broke. And I've got a new doctor. And she said, oh, well, we haven't got any record of you having tinnitus. Can't do anything. That was it. And I was so angry, I just stormed out. But now I've got a new doctor. But to live with it, well, you can't live with it. It's absolutely horrendous. It drives me nuts. So what works for you now, Norma? Well... Um, surprisingly, I can't. I can't have music on. And if I go into a, a, super, a, a shop and I've got music blaring out, I have to go out. I can't stand it. And to get to sleep was the worst thing. And I now I have a small radio, and I get through about three a year with earphones, and I get through about ten pairs of them a year. And I have Radio Five Live on all night long. So and if it... I do wake up, I learn something, so that was a bit of a bonus. But it does help because uh, you've got to understand, when it's so quiet at night and everybody's getting to sleep, you can't because you've constantly got this noise in your ears. If you, if you put something on in your house and try and get to sleep and it's right next to your ears, you can't do it. And, and that's exactly what... And people don't understand what you go through. It's an absolute nightmare. Mine is so loud now that I, I, I can barely cope. But I've got a new doctor now, and, I, and actually all this has jogged my mind today. I'm going to go to her this week, and I'm going to see if I can get something done about it because the, the masks, the ear, ear things, was wonderful. It was absolutely wonderful. I could I could live with that. I could cope with it. Um, but it, it's it's obviously ten times louder now, um, and it just drives me absolute nuts. I, I th from what we were told earlier from the, the audiologists, what they said that there is treatment available for you there, yeah. and you've just got to sort of bully your way in and make sure you get it. There's talking therapies, and there's the hearing aids you talk about, and and other stuff too. I think surely that's what you've got to do now. I'm glad we. Yeah. I hope we've jogged you into action, Norma. You have actually. I mean, I've been meaning to do it for years, and I, I just I don't bother because I think oh well, you know, I've got it. Get on with it. But now I, I it's unbearable, absolutely yeah. unbearable. You're not from Devon, are you, originally, Norma? No, I'm from Birmingham. Oh, I could pick up on that. <laughs> and you've been there all those years and you haven't lost your accent. That's um, I know, That's I know. exactly as it should be. No, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> but mind you, my children were two and six when I moved out. Right. And um, they've got proper Devon accents. Have and they? I can't understand them. <laughs> my husband and I, they're having a conversation together and my, me and my husband look at each other and say, like, what did I say? Right. <laughs> no idea. We have to pick up on the odd word here and there and try and spring it into a sentence. Right, OK. You can, you can take them for immersion therapy in Small Heath, actually. There's a special... <laughs> It's the College of Speaking Brummy. They'll get you back oh, in there, right. Norma. I know, small right. well. I was joking, by the way, but I'll start one if there's any demand for it. <laughs> yeah, All OK. Right. OK, Norma, thank you very much for that. So okay. you, well, just, I mean, let's get some advice from you as a long-time sufferer to give to Anne in, in Weybridge, who's just been diagnosed. It's presumably 
well, kind of do what you didn't do, I suppose, Norman, and just stick at it and make sure that, you know, you do get the best best yeah, advice. Yeah, but something somebody said earlier, they stopped drinking. I don't drink. All right. And um, when I did drink, I mean, I don't, I haven't drunk for years and years. I do very occasionally on my birthday yeah. or at Christmas. But even before that, when I was drinking, it was only on social occasions. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's made no difference to me. I eat healthy. Um, I'm a long-standing Slimming World person, so I, I, I know what I'm doing. Um, so that wouldn't make any difference okay. either. All right, well, listen, go to your GP and give them hell and do keep in touch I'm, with us. I'm going to. Okay. Gonna, no, I can't give my GP hell. All right. Well, I mean, hell in the, I mean hell in the nicest possible way, Norma. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, uh, All yeah. the best. Cheers, Norma. Thank you. And Anne in Weybridge, um, best of luck to you too. Do keep in touch with us and let us know how you get on. All right. Bye-bye. Okay, all the best. That's Anne in Surrey and uh, Norma in Devon via Birmingham. It's, uh, it's 10 to 12 now. Do let us know what you think. It's just coming up to 12 o'clock. Just on tinnitus, Andrew in Gillingham says, I've had tinnitus for just over seven years now. Started with an ear infection caused by constant use of dirty in-ear headphones. Good tip. Only use the over-ear ones now. In my case, it started with a whooshing, then a loud hum in my right ear, followed in the next few months by another three sounds, in uh, including a constant head hiss. Others have it worse than me and they get it at a younger age. I was 40 out. I'm sort of used to it now. Bit of a pain when trying to listen for a puncture on my bike though. Quite right. Keep those earphones clean, kids, says uh, Andrew in uh, in Gillingham. And uh, Chris uh, in Worthing says, uh, tell the lady with tinnitus to get a radio pad for under the uh, under the pillow called Pillow Talk so you don't have to wear earphones. Brilliant. Only you can hear it plugs into the radio. Uh, good tip, I must say.